All right. Today we're in Genesis chapter 37 as we move forward, right? Remember 36, we talked about a little bit last week, was just the history of Esau and his descendants and creating the country of Edom. So the Edomites who become enemies, <laughs> right, are all descendants of Esau, right? In 37, we have the introduction of Joseph as a primary character, right? Remember, he uh, the only thing we knew about him before is who his mother was. And who was his mother? Um, his favorite wife? Rachel? Rachel. Yeah, Rebecca was his mother. <laughs> right. So, was uh, Jacob's, Israel's mother, right? And we got Jacob living in the land of, of Canaan, but he's down at Hebron, right? And when he's 17 years of age, he was pastoring the flock with his brothers. This is in verse 2. While he was still a youth, along with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zipphah, right, his father's wives, technically his concubines, and Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. Okay? And did that make uh, them like him? No. <laughs> Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a multicolored, very colored tunic or a robe. This is like a full-length deal, right? Okay? And all his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, and so they hated him and could not speak to him it says here on friendly terms. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't even be polite to him. They despised him so much. Mm. Right? That'd be a bad way to grow up, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be a difficult situation. Now, I'm just wondering, the, the cause of the problem is Israel. You know, Jacob. Not yes. Joseph. <laughs> Right? Except some of the dreams didn't help. Well, but they came from God, so. <laughs> right? We're going to talk about that. Then Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, my, my translation says, please listen to this dream which I have had. It's really a more emphatic. It's more like, pay attention to what I'm saying. I've had this dream, right? For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheave rose up and also stood erect, and behold, your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to my sheave. <laughs> now, how many of the brothers are older than him? All of them. All but Benjamin, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and some of them are quite a bit older. Okay? Like 20 years. <laughs> so, and then his brother said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us? Are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. They don't like the fact that he had a dream, and they don't like the fact that he told them. <laughs> right? Now, if you were a teenager, and you had a dream like that, would you tell everybody? It depends on what you wanted that to, to do to him. He, he was just excited. I think he was just excited about it. We don't really know. But in, in this whole thing, the Lord doesn't give us 
the motivation behind the actions, right, in several cases, especially with Joseph, right? And so I think it's probably more safe to assume, since God doesn't say it, that he didn't mean any evil intent. He was just excited about the dream, right? And he tells his brothers, of course, they just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> now you think you're going to rule over us, right? Now, he didn't say that. And he may not have realized the interpretation of the dream at this time. Maybe. But as soon as they sprouted off, he did, right? If he didn't before, he did then, yeah. right? Now, who else has had dreams that the Lord had given dreams to? Especially in the family. <laughs> Jacob, right? Yeah. And he had explained his dreams and his reasoning and why he was now so devoted to God, right? Because of what God had done for him, starting with his dreams, right? So they, and that was a common practice, by the way, in those days, that dreams they thought were there to interpret and tell them something about the future. That was a common uh, opinion of people in this time, right? Does God ever give us dreams today? Mm -hmm. I think so, right? You know. We have dreams, and whether or not He gives them. <laughs> well, how do you determine if it's something from God or just bad pizza? <laughs> You thought if I put that, if you put that outdoor, it wouldn't bother you, didn't you? You thought if I put that, your box out, if you put your box out there, I wouldn't bother you. <laughs> yeah. You get one of these red things. Yes. And do you, are these men in your class, if they're not, I need a metal one. Thomas Fry? <laughs> <laughs> that would I, mean, be I thought that's who that was, but uh, he's, not, he's not, is he? Hmm. Okay. I think he comes from church once in a while. I'll go with mail. Don't you think? Think, is, is that the guy that comes I'm, in and I'm, puts the earphones on? I, that's what I thought, and, but he's not. Somebody said, no, he's not, somebody not said that guy was in your class. I no. didn't think so. No. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no problem. Okay. <laughs> right. So anyway, we have dreams. But if you're wondering if it's something God's telling us, you know. Combine, check me on. Check with me on the sick chest. Right. Check it with the Word of God. If it's from God, it will not contradict the Word of God, will it? And of course, this is God's primary way of talking to us today, now that we have the written Word. Right? Okay. So anyway, <laughs> then he had another dream and related it to his brothers and lo... I still had another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. And he related it to his father and to his brothers. <laughs> okay? And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come and bow ourselves down before you to the ground? <laughs> Jacob Israel is not too thrilled about this concept either, is he? <laughs> and of course, the brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept this saying in his in mind, right? He's the dreamer himself, right? Now his son has a dream, and so even though he's like, I don't think I'm going to be bowing down to you, <laughs> right? He's still like, wait a minute. Is God actually saying something here? And this is his favorite son anyway. I mean, if any one of his sons was going to be primary, right, he would want it to be Joseph. Okay? 
Then his brothers went to pasture their father's flock at you know, at Shechem, right? So Jacob sends Joseph to go see his brothers and see how things are going. Because they're uh, a good 20 miles away, right? Because they've got a lot of flock and they've got to find pasture land. Okay. And, and he found them without a cell phone. Uh, without a cell phone. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> or GPS. <laughs> but he did get some assistance from the strange man that said, no, they went over to Dothan. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they apparently used up all the green pasture at Shechem. <laughs> you remember Shechem? No. You remember when Jacob came down from Haran, met his brother, and then went across into the promised land and settled at Shechem. Right? And the son of the king at Shechem raped his sister, sister Dinah, right? And then they went in after they were all circumcised and killed all the men. The reason why I bring that really up is he's got brothers that are already murderers, right? This is not a foreign thought to them. That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. So, <clears throat> so Israel sends him there. In verse 15, he found a man, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, what are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. Why would he think this guy would know? Other than the fact they had a lot of a lot of flock, so when the herd moved, probably everybody around knew, right? Mm -hmm. And the man said, "They have moved from here, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan.'" So it just puzzles me that the man would be in a position to hear them say that. Yeah. Who is this man? We don't have any other description, right? But somehow he was in their camp <laughs> and heard them say this, right? So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. But <laughs> when they saw him from a distance, how did they recognize him? The coat. Ooh. The coat. <laughs> Before he came close, they plotted against him to put him to death. Whose idea was it to kill him? The brothers. Yeah, which one? Oh, the eldest? Yeah. No, no. No. Not the eldest. The, uh... Reuben? No, Reuben is the eldest. Is yeah. Uh, Probably the ones that went into Shechem and killed all the men there. Right? If you're already a murderer and you've already killed many men, you know, the idea of killing one more, even your brother, it doesn't bother you that much, does it? Yeah. Right? But the rest of them went along with it. Right? They planned to kill him before he even got there. And they said to one another, here comes this dreamer. This word means more like Lord of dreams. <laughs> right? He's got big dreams. Okay? Okay? Now then, come let us kill him to, now, and throw him into one of the pits and we will say a wild beast devoured him and let us see what will become of his dreams, right? This word kill means to slay or to slaughter, not the same word used in the sixth commandment that says thou shalt not murder. They don't want to be guilty of murder, Right? They're just going to slay him. <laughs> you know, they're mixing words because they are a little concerned about how God's going to react to them killing their brother. 
okay? But they're like, what's gonna become of his dreams then when he's laying in the bottom of the pit? And we'll tell his dad, you know, that a wild beast tore him up. Now, but Reuben, the oldest, heard this and, and rescued him out of their hands and said, let us not take his life. Reuben further said to them, shed no blood, throw him into this pit that is in the wilderness, but do not lay hands on him, right? And he's speaking with some urgency here, right? That he might rescue him out of their hands to restore him to his father. Now, why would Reuben change his mind? Why would he say, let's not kill him? Let's go back to verse 22 of chapter 35. And it came about while Israel was dwelling in the land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. He's already in hot water. He's basically forfeiting his firstborn birthright. He's trying to get restitution here, right? He wants to get things straightened out with dad. So he said, if I can restore his beloved son, right, then I'll be in good shape again. <laughs> Probably his motivation. Now, maybe he just had a softer heart. I don't know, right? It doesn't give us his motivation, but we can kind of surmise here from... And when we read the end of chapter Genesis and chapter 50, when he's talking about who's going to get what, <laughs> Reuben kind of gets cut to the side, right? And it came about when Joseph reached his brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the multicolored or very colored tunic that was on him, and they took him and threw him into the pit. This is a physical grabbing, right? In a very rough way and literally throw him in the pit. They were not concerned about what happened to him on the way down. He was not lowered into the pit, right? Some of these are like 20 foot deep or <laughs> some of them more, right? You know, and apparently this one was dry, okay? It says, now the pit was empty without any water in it. So either it's in the time of the year that some of the pits, some, the water wells dry up just because of lack of rain, or they're in like a famine time, you know, where the, there hasn't, just hasn't been rain, okay? Which might be why they're having to move the flock around so much. Okay, <clears throat> so then he sat down... They sat down to eat a meal. They've taken their brother, right? And have thrown him into this pit. And then they sit down to eat. Now what's Joseph doing down in the bottom of the pit? Cold and starving, probably. Well, he's, and he's shouting for help, I would imagine, if he's awake. Right? I don't know if he got knocked out on the way down or whatnot, you know. But they knew he was alive because they decide here in a minute what to do with him next, okay? So they're like, okay. And they just, how callous to just sit down and eat while he's crying for help probably. What did they eat? Well... What did they do with the tunic? They Put, killed a lamb to get the They killed a goat, right, blood. to get the blood. What, so what do you think they ate? Probably the goat, right? Probably. They wouldn't have just wasted it, would they? <laughs> For Joseph, they had problem food. But you know, I'm guessing they ate the goat they killed. Right? I'm not sure that I ever ate a goat, so I'm, I don't know that that's edible. But 
Very rare. Oh yeah. But I just it just amazes me the callousness here of his brothers. Just just kind of off the chart to me. These are the sons of Jacob Israel, right? Who now is walking very closely with God, right? After his dreams and how God's taken care of him, right? You know, and to have his sons act this way, just uh, it's just mind-boggling, right? And they raised their eyes and looked, and behold, a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead. Who are the Ishmaelites? Of yeah, and who's Ishmael? Ishmael is uh, Isaac's brother. Isaac's brother. Yeah, exactly. Abraham's son. Mm. By the maid. <laughs> right? Okay. He's coming from Gilead. Gilead, you know, remember, is on the eastern side of the Jordan, the, the grasslands over there. But this is where the trade route goes. Okay? So they're, they're there, and here they come with their camels bearing <coughs> aromic gum and balm and myrrh on their way to bring them down to Egypt. You know what's interesting? A little bit later, when the famine hits really hard and Israel sends the brothers to Egypt to get food, what does he send as a present for the king? But gum and balm and myrrh, <laughs> right? Basically the same stuff, <laughs> right? So anyway, I don't know why it's important to know that, but God included in here what they were taking in both cases, <laughs> right? And Judah said to his brothers, what prophet is it for us to kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh, and his brothers listen to him. So Judah's like, well, he is our, you know, he is our brother. We shouldn't kill him, right? But it's okay to sell him in slavery and make some money. <laughs> Let's profit off of this. So the brothers are selling him into slavery, wanting to kill their brother. Judah is now saying, no, nah, no, nah, let's just not kill him, but let's make a profit. And we're still going to deceive our father, right? Who are these guys? His brother. Who are they in history? To say. Okay, how about the heads of the 12 tribes of Israel? Well, having those kinds of heads wouldn't be very good for the rest of the people. Yeah, that's my point is God still takes these 12 men, right, and honors them in such a way like Jesus Christ is known as the Lion of Judah. Judah, this Judah right here, this Judah is now in the lineage of the Messiah. This guy, have you ever made a mistake? Anybody ever sin? Maybe not to the point of murdering your brother. Say it sure is Isn't it amazing the forgiveness of God? Mm -hmm. You know, I like to use the example of Solomon, right? Solomon's mother was Bathsheba, the woman that David had the affair with, the married woman, mm -hmm. right? One of his best friend's wives. <laughs> now the baby that came from that died. The Lord took the baby. But the next baby, to show his forgiveness, when David repented, 
right, was Solomon who became the next king. Over all his older brothers, I might add, just like how Joseph rises to be, <laughs> right, in essence, above all of his brothers. Okay? It, interesting that in the next verse it says, Then some Midianite traders passed by. So they pulled him up and lifted Joseph out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. Thus they brought Joseph to Egypt. Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, so he tore his clothes. Did he tear? Reuben and all that other transaction. Well, now that's a good, we don't know. We, all we know is he was trying to sneak off, but the brothers had grabbed him and sold him to the Ishmaelites, right? Who then took him to Egypt, Right? <laughs> but Reuben's plans were now messed up. So, I don't know that he was upset about what happened to Joseph or he just was upset that his plans to restore himself to his father were destroyed. <laughs> Because remember, initially, he went along with the idea of killing him. Okay? But now he's upset. And, you know, maybe he really realized, I don't know, but it says he tore his garments, which is a sign of remorse. Right? And he returned to his brothers and said, This boy is not there. As for me, where am I to go? <laughs> and they took Joseph's tunic and slaughtered a male goat and dipped the tunic in the blood and they sent the very colored tunic and brought it to their father and said, we found this. Please examine to see whether it is your son's tunic or not. They knew, didn't they? <laughs> Obviously. And he examined it and said, it is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. So Jacob tore his clothes, put on sath clock, on his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, Surely I will go down to Sheol in mourning for my son. So his father wept for him. Now, they, it says they, quote unquote, tried to comfort him. Did they really try to comfort him? Girls probably didn't know what happened. The, you bet. The daughters, the girls did not know what had happened, right? But the brothers all knew, all but Benjamin. He wasn't there, <laughs> yeah. right? They knew what had happened, and they really weren't trying to comfort their father, were they? Well, okay? <laughs> you know, because then they would have to say what they did. They were just trying to get rid of Joseph, so that they could be rid of him and not kill him. Yeah, they decided it wasn't a good idea to kill him. God might get mad at us for that, but it's okay to sell him into slavery and make a profit. <laughs> right? And get a load of this. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's officer, the captain of the bodyguard. Why do you suppose God is mentioning these tribes, this, this caravan, as Ishmaelites and Midianites? He sold them to the Ishmaelites, but the Midianites sold them to Potiphar. Because Ishmaelites are from Ishmael. Midianites are from, uh, I forget his name, but his, Abraham's son from his second wife, Keturah. <laughs> Where the Midianites come from. So they're different people. Now, it could be that they were traveling together for safety as this caravan goes to Egypt. They might have hooked up over in Gilead, and, and, and we don't know. I just wonder why God specifically tells us that there were Ishmaelites and Midianites. They were, he was sold to the Ishmaelites, but the Midianites sold him to Potiphar. <laughs> Do 
in my commentaries, there was no answer to that. <laughs> you know? Well, the Midianites pulled him out of the cistern, right? Well, the brothers pulled him out oh. and they presented him to the, and said, hey, we got a slave for you. Oh, okay. But since he was all messed up from being thrown into the pit, they only got 20 pieces of silver because the normal price for a slave was 30 pieces of silver. Even, which tells you something about the economy, how many years later was Jesus sold as a slave? <laughs> 33 years. He was, you know, well, you know, he was, uh, uh, Judas, you know, betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, which was the price of a slave, right? And it had been that price for about 1,500 years. So we didn't have inflation back in those days. Like we do today. We have, we have an economy that's based on inflation, based on, you know, because it's a debt-based economy. You know, not a whole other story, but the point being is that when he's sold for only 20 pieces of silver, I'm assuming it's because he was kind of messed up, being pitched into the pit. <laughs> Okay, but now he's in Egypt. But he didn't really deserve to be sold into slavery, did he? I think it's interesting how God forgives us of even these really heinous, you know, sins. You know, and boy, I'm glad he does. <laughs> you know praise the Lord so Heavenly Father as always I thank you for your word for your forgiveness for all our sins